Kempo staff at Home for Beginners. You can have any martial arts staff. It can be a long staff or a short staff to do these exercises, especially if you're stuck inside and you have a low ceiling, you can use a shorter staff just to follow me and get started with. It doesn't really matter what you have. Start with a broomstick, start with a mop handle, a sanding pole, a painter's pole, a stick you found out in the backyard or down at the park, but grab something and follow me. You're gonna start with a simple warm up. It starts in the palm of your hand. I always put a piece of tape there. I'm gonna lower it just a little bit. Piece of tape there so you can find the center, so I can find the center without thinking about it. That's the balance point. You don't have to do that. That's just a quick way to do it. Good morning, Adrish. You're going back and forth in one hand. You wanna get blood to flow into the joints. You wanna lubricate the joints, keep them safe from injury. This is the best way to do it while at the same time building a lot of power. Good morning, Hank. It's good to see you. You're going side to side and then you put it in the other hand, just back and forth, making it really, really simple. Back and forth, keeping it going. Hello, it's good to see you. I'm getting a little glitchy here. I'm gonna correct something real quick, so bear with me. There we go. So side to side, we're just going back and forth. We wanna go in and up or out and in, however you wanna think about it. The faster you go, as if you warm up a little bit, the more stress you're gonna put on that muscle there, the muscles in the hand, the joints, the ligament, good evening, and you're gonna get stronger faster. So don't be afraid, if you've been doing this for a while, to speed it up today. Now, go into one hand and out to the other one. When you're training bow staff or you're learning how to use your bow staff at home for beginners or intermediate, you always wanna warm up pretty much the same way. Good morning, it's good to see you. You're just going side to side. The reason for this is that your body is adaptable and you're gonna to adapt to it. And at the same time, you can still vary the workout by going faster, increasing intensity, increasing the amount of time you do it, or increasing complexity. In this workout, we're gonna do all three. So you're just going side to side. Thank you very much, I appreciate that, Adrish. Side to side, a little faster. If you're a beginner, slow it down. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. You're just training yourself how to get from one hand to the other hand, palms face the sky, pinky to pinky out, side to side, out to in. Now, I want you to go into one hand. This uh, is my right hand, it can be right or left, doesn't matter, because you're gonna do both hands the same. And you're gonna go down and make a circle on the outside of the opposite side of the body. Right hand, this is the left side, and then bring it back. And you're gonna make that circle on the right side of the body. Now I'm slowing this down so you can see that I'm carving a sideways figure eight, also known as an infinity sign. And then I'm gonna gradually speed it up. I want you to go slowly at first. There's a bag back there. Slowly at first and gradually speed it up. Now, you can also do this. I wanna show you from the side. I want you to see that my hand is not opening. But you can also do this motion. Let me show you from the other side. There's a little bit where my hand opens a little. Maybe my, hand, my fingers roll out for flexibility, but my fingers aren't coming open. Don't let your fingers come open. I'll show you from the back. But you can also do this different heights. I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit because I know I'm gonna hit that bag back there again. So from here, I can do it low in front of my belly button. And then I can do it in the middle of my body and I can do it the level of my head. And there's, good, there's value in there. Remember I said you can make it more complex. If you're not a beginner, if you've been doing this for a while, this is how you progress. You progress the complexity. You can, uh, the, the angle, the height, you can go up and down, do two complexities at once, or change two things at once, and then put it out to the side and change the plane. Do the plane shoulder high, do the plane hip high, go up head high. 
but you want to be able to go through all the way in each one of these levels. Thank you so much, Naj. I really appreciate that. It's my pleasure. God bless you too. We're a blessing to each other. We're all in this together in this virtual martial arts dojo. That's what we're in together. Now put it in the other hand. Again, there's that middle point. And I put the purple tape on and the yellow tape right there. It's kind of hard to see in the sun. It's beautiful and sunny down here today in South Florida. I hope wherever you are, the sun is shining. And if it's nighttime, I hope the sun was shining all day. Even if it's cold, I'll take, we're going sideways in this figure eight. I'll take a cold day with a sunny sky over any kind of day with gray skies. Every once in a while, gray skies are okay, but every day, day after day, kind of wears on you. But down here, beautiful. It's been chilly, comparatively speaking. It's been, it's been warm for up north, but down here it's a little bit colder, but it's been beautiful. Just the sun shines, no bugs. We're going side to side. And again, I want you to go make these progressions progressively more challenging. Go lower around your belly level, try your chest level, and then try the head level, and then go all the way through, down and up, traveling up and down, and really start to work the muscles in the shoulder, and then get it to the side of your body, and do it down here, hip level, shoulder level, and face level, and then again, travel down and up, down and up, down and up. Squeeze your abdominal muscles. That's the key to getting more speed in your spin. Now, we're going back into that first hand, and I'm going to take the exact same spin, but I'm going to reverse it by pulling the, the pinky side. When you did that first motion, you were like pushing, carving with your thumb. Now you're going to carve, pulling back in the opposite direction with the small side of the hand. It's still a circle here and a circle here. So it's circling and it's circling here. You can see if I use just my hand, it's going away from me and then back behind my head. Away from me and back behind my head. And then from here, it's going away from me and in front of my head, in front of my face. So when I pull, it's the same motion. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, stomach up and in, different levels, belly level, chest, face, all the way through, down and up. You're gonna feel it in your shoulder. And if it's too much for your shoulder, don't do it yet. Just keep it, slow it down, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Give yourself time, give yourself grace. You will get better faster. If you give yourself, if you get your ego out of the way and you say, look, I don't have it yet. Adopt that word yet. That's the most powerful word you can add to your vocabulary. Can't do it yet. Can't afford it yet. Don't know it yet. This one is a rattan staff. Watch. See how much it shakes? So rattan, it's not bamboo, but rattan. Bamboo is more rigid. Rattan is more flexible. Uh, bamboo is usually hollow. This is not. Rattan, they're both grasses. But this is a rattan staff. There's a link below if you want to see what these cost generally. But look for rattan, R-A-T-T-A-N. And it's the lightest weight you can start with. Now, for self-defense, it's still very effective. You can still defend yourself with it. You can use it as a hiking stick. You can create distance. You can strike. But it's not going to hit as hard as that oak bow. You'll see the red oak bow as an option below. Those also good starting point, but it's heavier. Starting lighter really allows you to learn these tricks faster or techniques because you're not going to fatigue as fast. So you're going to be able to spend longer time training. And you're going to learn it faster. So. Maybe the rattan is the best choice. Now this style is more, you'll see more in the Kung Fu style, right? More, and more in this hand grip, striking this way, twisting motions, where the oak 
style. There's gonna be more that Kubodo, Kobudo, the Japanese style where you're, um, you're just using it for self-defense. You're not gonna spin very much in the Japanese style. For some Japanese purists or Okinawan purists, they hate the spin. They really don't like when I say bow staff because bow staff, bow means staff. So when you say bow staff, you're saying staff staff. I put it there so you can find me and we can train together in our virtual dojo. All right, so we did our reverse spins, we did our forward figure eights. Now go back into one hand and I promised I would do this for you. You asked me the difference between skip catch and butterfly and the other spin that I teach, which is really a butterfly spin, but it's the one where I slide down, palms facing each other. So we're gonna start with this one. Start, this is my left hand. You start right or left, doesn't matter. I often expect that you're gonna reverse it because you know, you're, I'm gonna hold my left, you're gonna hold your right, and the only difference is the watch, right? Take your watch off anyway. You're gonna turn this palm. I have mine on so that I can glance at the time all the, all the time, make sure that I'm not gonna miss something because I do that. The other one, palm down or palm out, thumb down. See how that slides? Now this is the first spin I want you to learn. They're all very similar and they're gonna become interchangeable for you later. But this is the first one I would like you to spin because this one keeps the hands close together, gives you the most control of your staff. So see how the palms are facing each other? One's above the other one. The pinky, the thumb on, uh, pinky on one finger, the thumb on the other one, touching. Now the top hand is going to turn. The bottom hand is just gonna pull back, but the wrists stay together, and it's gonna turn all the way until it can't turn any longer. And the bottom hand is gonna come in and slide under there. That's the beginning of the butterfly, by the way. There are the wings. That's his antenna or his head. And it's gonna turn. The top hand now pulls in out of the way as the bottom hand continues. It's in super slow-mo now. Turn under. And I'm gonna have you bring your hand back up and grab it. And turn it. Slide down. When you slide it down and you, we call this the cut, you cut it out, you push it. That's how you're gonna to start to increase the speed of this particular spin. Now this is the first one I want you to see and let me show you the distinction of what a lot of people call the butterfly spin. These are, they're both the same spin. It's just what am I doing with the top hand? I'm bringing it out this way. I want you to learn how to snap it out. Good morning, it's good to see you. And pop it out. Yeah, it's been a, a bit, a bit a super busy week for me. So I turn this up. I slide that out and catch it. Now let me show you the, the traditional butterfly spin. I'm gonna show you it goes in two directions, which is how sometimes it looks confusing. Let me drop it just a little bit so I don't have to hold my shoulders up. From here, the other hand is on top. It's not gonna slide when it turns up. This one, bottom one, it's gonna come under, good morning. Good, I'm glad they did that for you, Albert. I appreciate that. Appreciate your comment. Century is a good company and they, they are fighting for survival. I talked to some guys there I hope I'm not telling their, their private business, but that ship should, should have sailed for most people, right? We know what's going on. The world's a difficult place right now for fitness industry. Martial arts falls in the fitness industry. So if schools are dying and they're barely hanging on, then the martial arts supply, they're having a hard time too. So I'm glad they're doing everything it takes to make it right. Now this is the butterfly, this, this is what calls it the butterfly, right? What a lot of people see and why this is sometimes confusing is most people are doing it in the reverse or a lot of videos that you see are in the reverse. Now this is the butterfly, but this is also the butterfly just going in the other direction. Does that make sense? So it's the same bow. This one is from Century Martial Arts. That's the first link below if you want to look at it. And this is their rattan staff. See how my wrists, they never come out of contact, which is how we're gonna distinguish it from the skip catch. 
because that was the next one you said is how do I do the skip catch? What's the difference between the skip catch and the butterfly? And what's that one you always teach your beginners? And I always teach this one where you slide that hand down the arm and that's to start to increase that speed of the spin. Let me see if I can get it going there. I need to focus, pay attention for a second. But it's, it's the same as the butterfly spin, just going in the opposite direction. Now, again, this is what the wings, the butterfly, there's the antennae, antennae, or however you say that. It's two antennas. Palms facing each other. This hand has to pull out of the way. Wrists stay in contact for maximum control. As this comes up, this hand is going to slide. Let's see if I can show it without hitting the camera. Slide under. Get up on my toes. You see that one? And then under. So you're just coming. Good. Yeah, so the, the whole purpose of the purple and the yellow is sometimes when I slow it way down and I'm showing you guys, or I'm showing you how to do the, um, the butterfly or the figure eight. If you, if you think of just one, one side, hold on, let me show you this, how I come up with this. So this is a Kali or a Screma Arnie stick. So imagine that you're doing this motion. That's the exact same thing as this. So if you focus just on the purple and the center, and you, in your imagination, you cut that piece off and you just have one, one collie stick, kind of a long collie stick, but one stick. And you can think of just like you can isolate in your head. Sometimes that's really helpful. Just thinking about one side, ignore that one. And then you can see, if you just keep your eyes on the purple, I know it's kind of hard with the lighting in here, Keep your eyes in the purple. And sometimes that's the best way to train your brain so that you can get that. Now back to the butterfly. If I'm under and I come over, this is the butterfly and this is the butterfly in reverse. And that's the key. See, so I go one way. This is the way you'll see a lot of people showing it online if they do a tutorial. But this is also the butterfly just in the opposite direction. Now, switch your hands. That means the other hand goes on top, and now you're doing the butterfly on the other hand, and you have, again, two directions of the spin. They're both butterflies. You're, this is where the watch needs to get out of the way because it's getting in the way of my wrists. But I wanted you to see that those are both butterflies, one way and the other way, and it's, so there are four versions, right? Two directions with one hand, two directions with the other hand. Now, the skip catch. If you think, so skip catch, same thing, because this is what's confusing too, is the skip catch is basically deconstructed, a deconstructed butterfly spin. I say deconstructed because like when we go to Taco Tuesday, my wife likes to order the deconstructed tacos. And <laughs> that just means that she has a plate full of taco meat and all the fixings of the taco, and then she has some soft tacos, tortilla shells, and then she makes what she wants. That's a deconstructed taco, right? So I eat the regular tacos. Mine are constructed like this. The wrists are touching. If you stop touching the wrists, wrists together and you kind of cut this top one, bottom one, you can be on the top or it can be on the bottom and your hands are apart. Your hand can only spin so much in one direction before the, the other hand has to take it or it'll fall to the ground like that. That's, that's basically the skip catch. And you can go in one direction or you can go in the other direction. Whoop, got to take it with that hand. And you can have one hand on top or you can have the other hand on top. That's the same thing as the four different spins. Let me know if that's, if that's confusing, because I think I'm a little confused myself. <laughs> but it's, it's basically no more than a butterfly spin, and then you just start going faster and faster, and you'll see some people really lift their elbows a lot. That, try not to lift your elbows a lot. Keep your elbows down. 
You'll get more control. It'll be harder at first, but in the end, you'll get faster. And then when you watch people do the bow or the, these different spins, they, they, they sometimes are using different kinds of materials. Let me show you real quick. And then we gotta go. So here's four versions, four versions of the same thing, four bows, right? This one is the one we've been using, rattan, we know that's light, but this one is white oak, and this is my favorite, but it's gonna move very differently because of the weight and the, uh, there's, no, there's no flexibility in the staff, very little, there is some, but. There's not a lot, but because it's heavier, it's now gonna start to spin faster once you get it going because of the momentum. And then, this is a performance staff, and there are two kinds of, uh, three really, there's a traditional performance staff, and then there are the, the two I'm gonna show you now. The traditional is one that I just flew, threw away. You'd, you'd use a regular bow. But this one is um, aluminum, and which way we want to spin it. There we go. We're going to get this one going. This is both heavy and inflexible and thin. The diameter here is less than, this is probably about, I think it's half of an inch. And so on this one, you're going to be able to do a lot of really fast things. The only uh, challenge with this one is when you hit yourself, it snaps your skin off. It, it cuts a little bit more because of the material. But it, you can go faster now and faster. I don't know how fast I'm going this morning. Friday mornings, I'm usually a little bit slower. <laughs> Just the accumulation of a week. But then there's this one. This is the one by, um, where's the, see, it's got my name on it. This was a gift from Bushi. Where is it? Maybe a word off spinning it. You, oh, there it is. Buki, good morning. Good to see you. This is this was a gift. Buki Yushu. I think it's .net. If you want to go see what these look like, BukiYushu.net. They'll make them for you. Um, you guys remember who owns that? De Castro, maybe. Manny De Castro. Does that sound right? I don't know. It's been a while. But he sent me this one, and this is this is one you'll see. You know the. Can't even do the figure four. That's my least favorite move, and all of that's why I don't teach that one. It, this 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 one is it's um it's a lot of like a lot of like most people don't know this, but taekwondo, tangsudo come from Japanese. The all, almost all the forms, except for like the new tegooks and the older page forms, pumse is what they call it in Korean, but they all come from the Japanese like Ishinru forms or Shorinru or a lot of them are Shotokan forms. But the way that the Japanese do them are very specific. And then a lot of the Korean schools pick them up. Yeah, good. I like that. Star Wars kid spin. Um, but let me, <laughs> these, the, the point is this is, I think this is like a, it's a graphite form you, or staff. You can move it very quickly, but if you hit it against anything, it's going to splinter and break. So, yeah, not practical for self-defense. Practical for if you want to be the next Danny Etkin or who was that kid that, uh, he's not a kid anymore, I don't think, but he was in the uh, vampire movies that all the teenagers loved him so much. You know what I'm talking about. And he, he was a Nazca kid. He was, he was on the circuit where he would do all the flips and spins. And you guys know what I'm talking about, don't you? Tyler, Taylor, Lautner, some, something like that. See how much TV I watch. All right, I want to finish with Tyler Lautner. I think that was his name. He was, he was a Bo Staff kid and a lot, a lot of uh, action movie kids. Uh, there's that, that big one now, European guy, or maybe he's Australian. You know, he was just in that It Man 4 movie. No, Tyler Weaver's another guy. Tyler Lautner, the, what was that? Um, he was a, you know, a teen heartthrob like 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, so let's talk, about, let's talk about the Darth Maul spin. And that's Ray Park. I know that name. He, he was the actor who played Darth Maul. And he had, 
he had both a both palms faced out, and yeah, Jacob and Ty, uh, uh, Twilight. That's it, Twilight. Was Jacob a werewolf or a? I say I don't even know. Good morning. I saw the new zombies show on zombies movie on uh, Disney. My kids were watching it, and all these zombies with the green hair and they're all dancing and they're cheerleaders or something. It's just it's funny to me how they and then then you start to think like. Why do they pick these particular colors? Because Disney doesn't do anything without a massive amount of psychology behind it and research. Anyway, I completely digress. Two-handed spin. Werewolf, all right. So comes over here to here. And I want you to think of it as three things. And the first one is going to be a strike, smashing down on top of their hair. Now this one, good. Comes down over the head. Think about hitting on top of the head and then think of a clearing motion or a blocking motion in front of your body. Now you're gonna clear it and bring this hand. I'm, we're just gonna focus on the left hand. Remember I said I had this purple on here so that, oh, don't apologize for your brother. Um, I had this purple on here so that you could see it, right? See purple and yellow, yellow's this side. So think about just the purple side. Purple side is my left hand. It could be your right hand if we're mirroring each other. So from here, bring the right hand under the left elbow, armpit. The left hand's gonna strike down. Think about hitting them on top of the head for self-defense. Then the purple side, the left side clears across the body and it goes and faces the sky. Now your hands, this is the most important part. If you miss this part, you'll be frustrated until you figure it out. Almost every time I teach this, I see the kid, not just the kids, kids and adults, their hands are, they're trying to change their hand position. Don't change your hand position. This is it. Push-ups. You can't change them from here. You don't need to change them. And if you try to change them on this spin, it's not going to work. So again, this is the Ray Park Darth Maul spin. It's just a two-handed bow spin. Right? So the left hand comes up, puts the right hand under your armpit, strike down with the left. Make sure it comes under your arm. Clear the front of your body. Just smash that. They're coming in trying to hit you here. Hit them for self-defense. Then bring that left hand to the sky. It's gotta be perpendicular up and down. Your hand has, position hasn't changed. Your left hand is now gonna strike down. Bring your right hand up, strike down again, clear the body, right hand faces the sky, smash at the right, smash at the left, clear the body, face the ceiling. One, all the way over, two. One, all the way over, two. Then start to flow, but remember, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, fast is, fast is powerful, right? Fighting speed, then act like Darth Maul, run forward a little bit, run back, turn different directions, and go to town, get crazy with it. That's a two-handed, two-handed uh, palms facing out spin. Two ways to hold it, like this or like this. You can also do that with this, but you'll have to change your hand positions every time. Change your hand position. This is called staff walking or hand walking on your staff. This is a good thing to practice as a beginner. And then when you start to do this, you won't even think about it. And then you'll be able to start doing that under the arm, weapon it around with your arm and your shoulder. We'll get into that in the next workout. You guys have been awesome. Again, thanks, Naj, for that donation, 10 bucks. I'll see you guys in just a little bit.